KSM show. And what's your saying? So, so the, the kids should be at the center. The teachers should be guides just to drive the whole conversation, but the kids should be at the center. Right. Okay. We'll, get, we'll come to that. Uh, but uh, I remember uh -huh. in, in, the whole, in the same spirit of, you talked about uh, the technology, the kids who are now in charge of the creative machine are the kids now. You had at one point even suggested that they could use mobile phones in schools. Smartphones. Smartphones. And there was a storm of uh, <laughs> fire. Yeah, but boom. Yeah, but boom. <laughs> Sir, what do you mean? Yeah, but boom. Can you, can you, you know, in line with everything you're saying, mm -hmm. you know, the, the technology where we're going, those who are actually driving technology and kids being allowed, being allowed to use smartphones in schools, mm -hmm. what, what was the whole from your own mouth? The whole thing is this. Do you remember when we first had the first mobile phone, uh, Mobitel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My daughter, uh, you know, it, it was very expensive those yes. days. Yes. And they would bring the bill to you. Mm. They had about three or four pages. And every item is cost in dollars that has been changed into CDs. One day I was looking at my bill and realized that it was too much. And I, I thought maybe there's someone else in this house who's also using the phone. Okay. Now I picked up the phone trying to figure a way to lock it. And then my daughter shows up. She was very small, or maybe about six then. And she looks at me and she looks at the phone. Say, Daddy, what are you trying to do? And I'm AD. <laughs> Say, Daddy, are you trying to lock it? <laughs> and then he said, But do you know how? <laughs> I didn't know how. Say, Daddy, do you want me to teach you? Mm. The same person I wanted to lock the, the phone from. against me. <laughs> now she's the one teaching teach me how, how to, to lock, lock it. it. So he said, Daddy, do you see the key on the left hand top corner? That says lock. Say, I've seen it. Daddy, press it. So I pressed it. Say, Daddy, does it say unlock? I said, Yes, that is locked. <laughs> then she pretends she's leaving. And then comes back, she comes back, Daddy, but do you know how to unlock it? <laughs> now I asked him, I had no idea how this thing works. Say, Daddy, do you want me to teach you? This is the digital age. But we have analog teachers hmm. teaching in the digital age. And that's the greatest irony in terms of how we are proceeding with education. Behove you. Behove you. <laughs> Behove you. We are in a digital generation mm -hmm. and we have analog teachers. Wow. Who are causing problems for us. And it's from elementary school to do, all the way to university. So let me tell you, if we were to do analysis, a critical analysis of the purveyors of education, the teachers up to the professors, and to find out how many of them are digitally literate, you'd be surprised. Mm. So where are we going from here? And then the thing is, and again, let's look at the Ghana culture again. Because we don't know how to do things, we don't want anybody else mm -hmm. to do it. Mm. Because we think that it will, uh, how do you call it, it will downgrade our own abilities. Which is true. Because let me tell you, when I'm teaching children, the first thing that I want to know is this. What is it that I can learn from you? What is it that I can learn from him? What is it that I can learn from her? So that we become a community of learners. We develop what we call a collegial attitude towards each other. But the culture doesn't allow that. In our culture, you don't talk with people, who, especially children, you talk at them. Mm. Now, when you keep talking at people and then you talk at me, or China, you talk at me, the third day, I won't even listen to you anymore. You, you've drawn a, a blank. But we need that collegial attitude. And that's a program that I learned. And I learned this the hard way, because I'd come from Ghana where I was teaching the US, and I had to really reorient my mm. mindset mm. through a program that we did in California called the Gifted and Talented Education. And the focus is this. We don't want you to teach the kids to be like you. Mm. We want you to teach them to be better than you. Now I ask them. And then how do you give something that you don't have? So they embarked on very expen uh, ex expensive types of training. Where you go to San Francisco, you go to Long Beach, you go to places. And sometimes they even pay to take my wife and children with me. But the important thing is this. We want to develop you to an extent where you can develop people who will now be in the Silicon Valley. Mm. In other words, we want to develop people with what you call an uncommon sense. You see, there's a difference between common sense though, and uncommon sense. Common sense is that if you touch fire, it will, it will burn you. you know? But uncommon sense is this. How do you walk through fire and not be burnt? Mm. How do we begin to be innovative, creative, and begin to design suits for fire people so they can walk through fire? The idea is this. There's absolutely no innovation in yeah. the way we teach here. 
you pick up the uh, textbook, read chapter 6, answer question 3, 4, and 5, Wapon. Mm. And then next week, read chapter 7, answer question 2, 3, and 8. That's not education. At the end of the day, how do we mold our youngsters so they can be creative, they can be critical thinkers, they can be inno innovative, and can, they can begin to do something with the education that you're getting, mm. you know? And I also cite the example of, uh, again, again, that's how I get motivated. When I see, I see young people do things. Mm -hmm. There was in one school where the school, the teacher was getting the youngsters to use chemistry to produce soap. Soap, the same soap that you see in, uh, uh, on the shelves in provision stores. Yeah. Liquid soap. So in this particular school, the school doesn't buy any soap. They produce their own soap. Their parents don't buy any soap. They buy the soap that their own students have produced and so on. That is putting chemistry to work. Mm. This is how we have to begin to reorient education mm. in this country. Mm. That we want to be doers. Yeah. And do you know where I also get my commitment from? I call that a Quijil Agri rule. Quijil Agri. Quijil Agri, 1925. He was looking at the intellectuals the same way I look at intellectuals in Ghana now. He said, my friend, don't tell me what you know. Show me what you can do. Mm. Let me repeat this. Mm. The Quijil Agri rule in 1925. Don't tell me, don't what, tell you me know. what you can do. Show me. No, no, don't tell me what you know. Oh, don't tell me what you know. Show, Show me, me feely, feely. what you can do. What you can do. That's what I call the Kwejilai uh, Guru. And that should be the platform on which we should begin to base education in this country. Mm. And guess who else learned from uh, Kwejilai Guru? Kwame Nkrumah. He said, look, we want thinkers of great thoughts. And we want doers of great, great deeds. Look, our education has been summarized for us by Kwejilai Guru in 1925 and in Krumah in 1957, what is it that we can do with education that we, we are, uh, that, that we are propounding to our youngsters so that we are not importing everything? We have, and then the other thing I also want to add is this. Let's look at the applications of science. If you look at the, uh, the uh, integrated science book in this country, every theory possible is in there. So I, I really believe that we have to begin to demystify education by even focusing on science that is relevant to every district. And that's a key thing, relevance. Relevant to every district. Yeah. Like, for example, there was a trainer that I was doing in the Mampusi area. And there was cotton blowing everywhere. And the students, who some are grown, they are sitting in the classroom pushing paper. And I asked myself, why don't we convert the cotton into textiles? and begin to produce textiles in the form of, uh, let's say, drapes, curtains, even from, from the president's office, from all the ministries, so that at the end of the day, science gives credence to what is relevant, so we don't have to import these things. That's one. And also, even if we begin to look at schools along the riverbanks, why don't we introduce fishing there as a science activity? You know, every district is different, and the earlier, we begin to have young people hands-on in terms of adding value to what it is that we're doing. That's what I talked about. What is the product that we can produce? Mm -hmm. What's the service that we can provide? What's the what solution, solution to societal problem? And then you realize that we have about 20% of the population in this country behind desks doing nothing. But we can get them to do something. So that's my motivation for what I do. Mm. I see the possibilities. Mm. <laughs> and, 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 I'm, I'm fired up by your energy, you know. But then every now and then, Mr. Reality also knocks on the door and said, yeah, but this is all true. But realistically, um, who, who, are the, who, who are the teachers to teach the kind of stuff that you're talking about? You know, and, I, and by the way, if, if, if I forget, please, this book here, everything he's saying here plus more, the old day here. <laughs> the day is like, The day is, the like, day is like proper. But these are a series of articles that you've been, you've been writing. And right. Yeah. Right. But yeah, and I was reading this and I, and I read um, your experience in going to some bathroom and they gone and... Hey, you and, remember that? <laughs> yeah. Hey, the disaster. Are, are <laughs> you want me to talk about that? <laughs> yeah, please share it, you know. Okay. okay, let me talk about that. Yeah. You know, uh, my book on leadership was being sold at Lego. So I want to see how the sales were like. And then in the process, I had to attend to nature's call. So I asked, where is the washroom? And they pointed the corner somewhere to me. 
Now, as I was going there, my brother, <laughs> the stench that met me <laughs> <laughs> on the way there. <laughs> on the way there, no. Whatever I had to do left me on the spot because under no circumstances really good, no? was I going to impose myself <laughs> to James, you know, that sort of thing. But then when I came out, and I, in the walkway, there was a water chamber, and the pipes were broken, and water was gushing everywhere. And people around didn't even take a, a second look at what, what is it. The reason why we don't have water to flush our toilets is because it's going everywhere. But now check this. Right across the road, say Department of Applied Sciences. <laughs> Let me see Radin. <laughs> if we can apply water yeah. to flush our toilets, then what are we here for? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So the but then they fixed it. I've gone there and they fixed it. And also when you begin to look at the dusty conditions, the walkways in some of our universities, and and then you begin to look at computers. Computers hate two things dust and heat. So if we cannot really do a landscape where we spend most of our time. Monday, we are there. Tuesday, we are there. All the way to on Friday, we are there. And we have 30,000 students on the campus. What on earth are they doing? Mm. You know? But I guess these things are now filtrating the system now. That at the end of the day, everybody needs to have something worthwhile to do. Put the academics aside. Academics become of value when you begin to see what it is that we can do with it. Thank you. But if you don't see what to do with the academics, you think if you're cranky, yeah? Yeah. because they're going to save yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. These yeah. are the things that we have to be uh, cognizant of. And, you know, I wanted to also share with you exactly how I got educated. You know, many times people say, look, I studied for a particular degree. For me, not only did I study for it, I worked for it and paid for it. So education means a lot to me. Like uh, when I was in a community college in the U.S., I was working in hotels, vacuuming the floors. Mm. Hoover, Hoover. Hoover. <laughs> <laughs> Vacuum the floors. And that's the money that I used to pay my uh, school fees. But then I realized I didn't want to vacuum forever. Mm. So in the first semester, in addition to taking courses in English literature, sociology, maths, and so on, I took a course in accounting one. The second semester, political science, uh, uh, history, and so on, I took accounting two. So based on just accounting one and accounting two, I can now work as a bookkeeper. Mm. So that's how I paid my school fees, you know. But then the American system has been set up in a very special way. Yeah. Especially the state institutions. I went to a state uh, university. But then that's how it works. You can take all your courses in the mornings in Guam. So you can use the afternoons to work. Or you can take the course on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you the weekends are yeah. yours. Or you can take the courses on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So the rest of the time is yours. I don't see how, frankly, at this point in our history, we have young people trapped behind academic doors. And they have no means of doing something that will add value to what we call the soft skills. Soft skills are not theory, so. How do you learn to get up in the morning, whether you like it or not? Mm -hmm. That is the point. How do you begin to relate to other people? You know, how do you perform on the job? How do you become time conscious? It's very important because we all have 24 hours in a day. And are you telling me that in our universities, we study 24 hours a day? Mm. Take eight hours for you to sleep. How many hours do you have left? 16 hours every day. Time management is what's lacking in this country. Mm. And then look at the ministries. If they say a meeting starts at nine, yeah. by 12 o'clock in Africa, will be back. Yeah. Because yeah. we don't have... Yeah. They, we are not time conscious. Yeah. And all of that is because it's not their fault. Though. That's how people were raised in a system. Yeah. You know, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. My, o my, no my worry is that there's not even any serious effort to change it. Sanity. It's like we are trapped by stethoscope paralysis, you know. Oh, that's a sign you know. To this date, somebody could say, uh, uh, could get there at 6 and 5.30, I'm getting ready to go to the road. But why? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so what? So, and is, that's my problem. That for me, not that I've lost hope, but I don't see hopes in the horizon. Don't, don't lose hope. No, I'm because not we have losing hope. For you. Don't lose hope. <laughs> now, there's nothing about you that to lose hope. Oh, your enthusiasm. And, yeah. and, and then I fire me up, Tiara. I fire me up, Tiara. I don't see anything in the horizon that, you know, the youth coming, unfortunately, we have trained them the analog way to act and think like we did, which failed us. Now they are coming up in that. How are we going to shift this thing? How are we going to change it, Tanis? 
Boame, na me ma dwi ho. Wa dwi na wo mo bia. Mi hu, mi hu. And what I say is this. It's everybody's responsibility. Mm. You know, it's a, I hope this book will start a movement. Yeah. A movement where students are engaged, parents are engaged, mm. the teachers mm. are engaged, mm. the mm. district assemblies are engaged, engaged the yeah. MPs are engaged, everybody is engaged because this is a movement that involves everybody. And I'll also give you one example. There was a program that I was doing with the Ghana National Association of Private Schools to promote reading culture in Ghana. And we've been, to, uh, uh, we've been involved in Accra, Kumasi, all the way to Wa, Upper West, and so on. And the issue was this. We want to develop a culture of reading in our young people. But does our culture promote reading? Mm. Does our culture promote reading? Look at the noise levels in this country. We try and yeah, 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 the church be so dangerous. Oh, 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 and then the parents too have to be seen reading. Mm. The teachers have to be seen reading. You know, so throw up cognac kind of book, but they've never seen mother or father read before, and children don't listen. Oh, show them, show them what to do. <laughs> don't tell me what you know. <laughs> show me what you can do. Yeah. So what I'm saying is this: we are in this together. Ghana is one of the most beautiful countries I've ever seen in my life, and I've traveled quite extensively. And to me, quite a number of you know, yeah, they are not before. Yeah, I had a before. I had a woman. Yeah, well, now we call school go to to go grassy. Inti, I have the sentiment for raising young people to give them what it is that we don't have. The other thing too, again, uh, how we want to begin to develop a culture that nourishes a human being, and the environment is key. Yeah. Look at the public schools that we have yeah. in this country. Yeah. And then it comes back to the question again. You ask the question: How do we prepare teachers? We prepare the teachers in the lecture halls. Let me say, Ruddy, you don't prepare teachers in a lecture hall. You prepare teachers from day one at the school site because that's where they're going to work. Are you going to prepare a doctor in a lecture hall? You prepare a doctor in a in clinic, a in a polyclinic, yeah. in the yeah. hospitals. That's the same attitude that we have to have with teachers. And then the thing is this, why don't the lecturers and the professors go to teach at the public schools? Why? Mm. Because I have no toilet in your, yeah. there's no mm. water. The school sits in dust, and nobody wants to go there. And then that's the hypocrisy of it. At the end of the day, we stick a certificate in somebody's hands to go to teach in a place where they've never been before. Why? You know, we know what to do. But how to do it, it's where I'm saying that now we need a mass movement mm. and realize that Ghana is a beautiful country. Yeah. We don't want to see our young people cross the Sahara, yeah. die in the process. Yeah. Cross the Mediterranean, yeah. die, die in, the in the process, process, and then go to places where they are clearly not wanted. Yeah. When we have a beautiful country like Ghana, we need a mass movement in this country because the children in this country are God's children like any other. But we have to begin to raise them properly. And then you see the difference it will make in this country. <laughs> and it all starts here, man. It all starts here. And I'm very, very privileged to have the, the honor to review this book during the launch and um give care some hand. Let me hear you. Oh, me hear you. Me hear you. But anyway, let's get past a little bit, man. Your wife is um. We hear anything? We hear anything? Me hear anything? Me hear anything? That will be all right. That will be all right. Oh, but be sure, sir. They will see you soon. Oh, bye for fair for now. Well, you know, I met my wife in the U.S. You know, she was at UCLA. This okay. was a long time ago. Okay. We met in 1976. And then uh, we've been together ever since, oh. you know. But uh, what I love about her is that she changed who I am. Oh, really? Yeah, my brother. That was troublesome. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? You know, and we've been together ever since. We yeah. have two children. And what's her name? Nane Frie. Nane Frie. I'm asking yeah. like, I don't know, but yeah. my, my, my audience. You know, so yeah. uh, sometimes you, you get lucky. When you have the right wife, you yeah, know, I mean, she's yeah. very supportive. I don't have to do much, just what I do here. <laughs> but she takes care of every other need, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm lucky to have the man. So mm. when I look at young people, 
And, 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 and there are kids, uh, you have two? I have three. You have three, okay. Two are born in the U.S. Okay. And one was born here. Okay. You know, I, I look at myself and I feel lucky because of the, the, the personality of the woman that I married. Mm. And I wish mm. that for every young person. Mm. You know, that Yanko mm. Bomwaye. So everyone to find the right person who understands you and who you understand mm. and mm. develop a lasting relationship that way. Because uh. it's difficult to do by yourself. Mm -hmm. And I know, 100%, 100%. <laughs> so, so, that is it. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Now, apart from writing about education and teaching teachers, now, like, you know, how do you hang out? What do you do to, to relax and... Yeah, I have no problems with relax at all. Uh, I mean, let me tell you, I have a huge library at home. I've been collecting books since I was in France Film Secondary School. I have some of my dictionaries there. So when I walk in there, I have my jazz music, you know, Jazz and Pepa, yeah. uh, Duke Ellington, yeah. Ella Fitzgerald, yeah. uh, Sammy Davis, yes. Sam yes. Cooke. Yes. You know, and so it's a, a refuge for me. Everybody needs that. So when I walk in there and I look at the, uh, the caliber of people in the library, Nelson Mandela, Desmond Tutu, William Shakespeare, Charles Dickens, mm. uh, uh, all the authors that you can think about and so on, they are there. And then, you know, that, and also, that's how I get the material for the books, right? Mm. Because I need to be motivated. Yeah. You know, I surround myself with people that I want to emulate. You know, for, like, for example, my own headmaster, Francis L. Bartels. He wrote three books, and they are like Bibles to me. And I also like reading about great people. Mm. What is it that makes them great? Mm. So autobiographies are very important. We also want to show biography, but so. I don't come a library. You know? <laughs> All the great things that you've done in this country. <laughs> Some of the things that you talk about yeah. when you come to visit my classes. We need to know that. The changes that you've gone through, especially where you did your first, uh, how, how will you call it? Your first audition, how will you call it? The, the, the play, the, the show? The first play that you did, and only two people came. Yeah. But you didn't give up. No. See, now that's the soft skills. How do I persevere? These are the things that you want to read about. And then out of the two people who came, one of them changed your life. Yeah. yeah. That's how we, we never gave up. So these are the things that we want to begin to understand in terms of surrounding ourselves. With great people, everybody needs a mentor. You know, when I travel, to be honest with you, uh, when I travel to, let's say, Boston, for example, I make sure that I'm able to locate the people who are, the people at the mm. uh, School of Education who are doing the sort of things that I'm doing. And I relate to them. So that I go to share their research findings and, and so on. And then when I write a book too, I go and give it to them. But they are mentors. We need mentors who are going to add value to who you are. Mm. Because no man is an island. Mm. Whatever mm. you want to do, you want to feel validated by other people who you respect. Yeah. So that yeah. you can begin to add value to yourself. So in this country, what I suggest to young people is that whatever discipline that you are interested in, whatever vocation that you are interested in, whatever profession that you are interested in, look within and find the people that you can emulate mm. and follow them. Mm. Don't follow one more. And then the commercials will be a while and say, they're not enough. And I, you know, these strange things yeah. that uh, young people get distracted with. Yeah. This yeah. is sharp. Look for people that you can emulate. Focus on those people. Find out about them. And then we shouldn't just restrict ourselves to Ghana. Look within Africa. Who are the great actors? Who are the great players? Begin to look within the boundaries. Go to South America. Who are the players there? Go to the United States. Who are the players there? And today, every information under the sun yep. is on the internet. Yep. So what's our excuse? Yep. So this is what my message to young people, that you are important. You are important for yourself, number one. Learn to lead who you are. To become a leader, so you can begin to lead others. But you have to lead yourself first. And begin to see how you can develop skills. Because you cannot give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. And everybody has that potential. Mm -hmm. What is your interest? How can you add value to it? How can you become a superior person in your own right? And let your light shine. Show some love. Show some love. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you, Andy, but I'm sure some people are watching and say, hey, this guy, I need to bring him to my school or my whatever. Come and inspire us. And is there any way, how they, do they have to call the school of medicine or they can, college it's, of medicine, or they, you have a number they can yeah, contact? Yeah, I mean, it's very easy. Okay. Every morning, my article comes out, Education Matters, and okay. under, under the, the, article. Uh, uh, the article, I have the, 
the email address there. Okay. The email address and okay. my blog is also there. Okay. So, so I'm very accessible. I'm accessible every Monday. Okay. You know, so every Monday, make sure you get yourself a copy of the Daily Graphic. Turn on to Education Matters. Page 38. Pa oh, it's page 38. 38. Yeah. Okay. And, and, then, and, and, and let's take it from there. Let's develop a movement in this country. Fantastic. Where we can bring the best out of every person in this country because, yes, so we are God's children. And I'm a boy. And that's a church. Amen. Just a lot more time. And the date is Tuesday, the 26th, right? 26th, at the yeah, Council. Yeah, yeah. Next, next Tuesday, actually, and uh, the launch of this book, Strategies, Effective Teaching and Learning. Okay. Every teacher, everybody who is involved in policy, any student, please get yourself a copy okay, of the. The other thing I also want to add is this: we want people to get this book in bulk mm. to the schools that they went to. Yeah. If you went to an elementary school, the teachers need help, so buy sets for them. If you went to a secondary school, the teachers there need help. Buy it for them. If you went to whatever university, the teachers there need help. Buy it for them because we are in this together. Yeah. And we see the difference that we make yeah. in this country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> KSM Show.